Hello and welcome everyone to another Artist Loft 101 drawing class. Um, I'm your instructor, Adrian Hodge, and I'm thrilled to be partnering with Michaels to bring you this ongoing drawing series. And I know we've got a lot of folks who have been joining since the beginning and have been following along. And so, um, yeah, welcome back. And tonight's class is on lines and tones, and it centers around the Artist Loft 101 set. So if you go into any Michaels or order online the Artist Loft 101 drawing set, you'll have all of the materials that I'm using tonight. Um, so it's that's uh, part of the supply list, the, the star of the supply list tonight. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and get started and switch over to my my tabletop view here. So like Jimena said, please tag any work that you make from tonight's class uh, with the hashtags make it with Michaels or Michaels classes. And you can follow me on Instagram at Adrian Hodge art. You can also tag me with your work on Instagram if you want to make sure that I see it or you can um, send it to me in an email. There's my website and email and Instagram again. You can find me on Facebook. Um, and I've been getting a lot of lovely messages and um, artwork examples sent to me from students of the class and I, I love to see it. Um, and then here's just some of my personal work on a few of my business cards if you're interested in checking out my work, you can see that at all those places that I mentioned. Okay, so uh, the supply list for tonight is everything in the Artist Loft 101 kit. So we've got a variety of the uh, H&B pencils. So we've got an H pencil, a 2H, a 2B, an HB, a 6B, and a 4B actually misplaced my 4B from the 101 set. So I've got my sketching pencil in there, which is pretty similar um, from the Artist Loft sketching set. And then I've got uh, the soft, medium, and hard charcoal pencils. We've also got the charcoal sticks, which I'm gonna um, just keep aside um, until the end, uh, towards the end of the class, um, since they're so messy. We've got the tortillions and uh, or blending stumps. You can call those either or. We've got a synthetic eraser and the, the kneaded eraser that comes with the kit. And then also one um, artist loft uh, pen. So um, it's an, an O3 pen. And then I asked, oh, and also it comes with a sharpener and some sandpaper. And then I added to the supply list. So you'll need a drawing uh, pad or sketch paper. And then I added the Artist Loft Utility Knife. You can use the Artist Loft Utility Knife. It's linked in the, the supply list. Or you can get any um, X-Acto knife or any one-sided blade box cutter that, that you might have on hand because we're going to be sharpening the pencils with a blade right off the bat. And I, I've done that in a few other classes, but I wanted to really just focus on that as a skill in um, this class tonight since the class is all about line variation. So you're definitely going to want um, some sort of utility knife or, or blade to sharpen your pencils with um, if you want to follow along with what we're doing. And then I also added the Artist Loft paint brushes, and that is for a uh, couple of blending options. Okay, so um, this is going to be a fairly slow paced class. Um, we're going to do, be doing some repetitive things, and we're maybe not going to uh, make anything you know, that might be considered a work of art necessarily, we're going to be doing more of some drills here. So we're going to be testing out every pencil in this kit, every, um, every material that comes in this kit. Hopefully we're going to have time to get to all of them uh, by the end of the class. Like I said, I'm going to save the, the messiest one for last. So that's the soft, medium, and hard uh, charcoal sticks. 
Um, and then we're going to be talking about lines and tones. And um, so the inspiration for this class is something that I, I've mentioned in multiple classes so far uh, since I began teaching this series. And that is that I am currently uh, learning how to play the guitar. And I am an absolute, absolute beginner when it comes to playing the guitar. Um, as an artist, I started when I was a teenager, I started drawing. Drawing was always a hobby of mine. I love to tell people that I, um, that I sort of stagnated at an eighth grade drawing ability for most of my teens and into my 20s until I was about 23 when I took my first college level drawing class. And um, I'm gonna actually switch back to the just camera view, Jimena, if you don't mind, just because I'm gonna do all, just a little bit of chit chat here for a minute. It feels weird just uh, no problem. <laughs> look at the page while I'm mostly just talking for a minute, um, give my little speech about um, consistent practice. So tonight's class and next week's class are both kind of centered around a theme of uh, developing your your art practice and developing a muscle memory and developing a consistent, you know, exercises that you can come back to, to, to develop in the learning phase. So, you know, I like to say that I stagnated at an eighth grade drawing ability until the age of 23 when I took my first college level art class. And in that class, I just learned a lot of techniques, a lot of the techniques that I've been talking about in the class so far and are in this series so far. Um, but mostly I started to develop a consistent practice. I started to practice every day and drawing for many hours. Every time that I did practice, I started putting in those 10,000 hours, right? People often say that to become a, an expert on something, you have to put in 10,000 hours with something. And that seems like a lot, but when you, you know, slowly peck away at that for years, it it's kind of easy to get to a certain point and look back and realize, oh, wow, I think I've passed that 10,000 mark and I'm, you know, considering myself an expert now in this field. Well, when it comes to playing the guitar, um, that is something I also attempted to do as a teenager that I loved and I, um, come from a family of musicians and um, had, you know, a family member who taught me how to play the guitar and or taught me the chords and sent me to my bedroom to practice. And I sat there with it when I was 15 years old in my bedroom and just found myself getting distracted, looking in the mirror, thinking I looked cute, you know, holding it, but not really wanting to put in the work and the effort to actually play it. So cut to now, many, many years later, I'm almost 40 and I'm trying to learn how to play the guitar again. And it's frustrating people. I don't have a muscle memory. I don't, my hands are not used to doing that, but I've dedicated myself to, you know, stretching the muscle that my fingers, you know, need to stretch in order to be able to move them across the frets and to play the various chords. And um, it's, I've got a, private lesson teacher who is helping me now and a wonderful partner who's been uh, teaching me as well. And so I'm learning how to play the guitar and it's a long road. What I have learned is that I need drills. I need little exercises that I can do on those days when I'm frustrated by the fact that I don't have the skill set yet. And so how are you supposed to put in the time put in the, the daily practice that you need to develop that muscle memory. If every time you're going to practice your skill, you're judging yourself because you're not where you want to be yet. So everything that we're doing tonight, and we can switch back. That's my little speech. Um, everything that we're doing tonight is uh, something that I do in all of my classes, especially in private lessons when um, I'm trying to help students just gain that muscle memory. So we're going to go through all of the materials in this kit and we're going to basically just practice a lot of different lines and see what kind of lines and what kind of tones 
we can make with each individual um, material. Because I have found throughout my many years of teaching adults now that um, you know we get very intimidated by our art supplies and we tend to treat them like there's some you know like we're not ready to use them yet and i love the idea that you just you know use everything that you've got and don't you know judge yourself and you know just get in there and just use it like develop a relationship with it um you know and that's the best way to start to develop that muscle memory uh the first thing i want to do is sharpen these pencils with a blade and so i have been using throughout all of the classes so far i've been using a lot of my sketching pencils have been sharpened like this with the blade so that a lot of the pencil is exposed and i've um I've gone over this in a few other classes, but I wanted to just really focus on this tonight. So if you take any of your pencils out of this kit, they're gonna come you know, pre-sharpened like that, but that can get used up pretty quickly. So uh, we're just gonna take our one-sided blade or our utility knife and you wanna cup or something to catch the, the shavings with, and you're gonna start towards the back um or not towards the back but you're going to start at least two or three inches back on the pencil and start to shave off the uh, encasing and you want to do long shallow cuts as you do this and that's going to just start to whittle down uh first is going to take off that um that encasing that's around the wood the little painted part there that's blue and it's gonna reveal just the wood around the graphite or the, the charcoal pencil, whichever one you're, you're sharpening now. We wanna sharpen all of the, the materials in this, um, this kit this way. And you know we're not gonna take the time to sharpen them all right now because that would take a really long time, but eventually you wanna get them all sharpened this way because when you do, you're gonna be able to just uh, make more of a variety of lines with them. So I'm just gonna sharpen one of my H's and one of my B's. So I'm gonna sharpen just the H and the 6B because like I said, we're probably not gonna have time to, you know, uh, demonstrate every, each one of these drills which each with each material, but um, we'll definitely touch on all of them and hopefully get to all of them by the end of the class. And if I don't get to a specific material in this kit by the end of the class, and we have a lot of questions on that one, then just please, um, Jimena's gonna interrupt me and let me know, or we'll have some time at the end uh, to see if there's any questions about things I didn't cover. So I'm just shaving down the wood. And once you get to the part where it's just the wood that's exposed, um, it's a lot easier. It's just softer. The, the casing is going to be harder to, to get the knife into. You always want to cut away from yourself. So you never want to have the blade facing you. You also don't want to put your finger out like this while you're, and that seems like obvious things to do, but sometimes we just get distracted or we're used to holding the pencil a certain way. And also while you're cutting, this might happen. What just happened to me right now was my knife went in a little too deep. And notice I said long, shallow cuts. So if you go in too deep, it's going to be kind of a struggle to get that piece to come off. So I would just back out of that and keep doing long, shallow cuts and let that, you know, if there's resistance, you want to not fight it. This should not be a challenging thing. And so it's just, you know, stay calm and slow. You never want to rush when you're, you know, got something like a sharp knife in your hands. Um, well, I don't know. I'm sure there's some situation where you might, but with this, you don't. Um, I'm thinking like when you're chopping onions or something, maybe it's nice to go fast, but point being, go slow. And once you start to get to the point where the graphite is being exposed, really be mindful not to go too deep there because you don't want to cut the graphite. So we're not sharpening the graphite with the blade. We're just exposing the graphite with the blade and we're gonna use our sandpaper to actually uh, sharpen the graphite. So, so Adrian, we have our first question here. 
Thank um, you. what do you recommend woodless pencils? Yeah, woodless, the woodless pencils are great and Artist Loft makes those as well. Um, but even with those, um, only you still have to sharpen those. And this is just a great way to sharpen your pencils so that you have more, you get more use out of the pencil as you go. Okay, so once I've exposed about half an inch of the actual uh, graphite part of the pencil, then I'm gonna use my, my sandpaper block that comes in this kit to rub the pencil against that and get it to a fine point. So now I've got it just as sharp as it comes, you know, out of the package, but I've also got a lot more to work with. Okay, any other questions before I move on to, well, I'm gonna go ahead and do that again because I wanna sharpen one of my H pencils as well that way. So far, nothing, but I'll let you know. Okay, cool, thanks. Okay, so I'm gonna take my own advice and do long, shallow cuts here. When I used to teach high school, I would make the students all do this once in front of me, because if they just watched me, oftentimes there would be this resistance of like, well, I'll do it later. I know how to do it. I saw you do it. And I'm like, but I want to see that you can do it yourself because it's such a great skill to have. And once you, you know, get over whatever you know, so I think some people are a little scared, you know, of using a knife like this. Um, and as you know, you should be cautious when you're using, you know, equipment like this. But um, as long as you're being safe, so I would have my high school students write out like a little uh, list of guidelines for using the exacto knives or utility knives to sharpen or to, you know, to use for anything like for collage and everything, just so that I knew that they knew what the rules were for being safe with them. So, but once you know how to do this, it's such a great skill to have and it's such an optimal way to sharpen your pencils. And I'm always seeing ads on uh, online, maybe it's because the algorithm hears me talking about sharpening a pencil like this all the time, but I'm always seeing ads for like really fancy pencil sharpeners that sharpen your pencil the best or make them the sharpest and I always just ignore them because I think this is the most beneficial way to sharpen a pencil. Also you extend the life of your pencil this way because um, it's much easier to use it down to where it's a, a smaller pencil and then uh, you can use the pencil extenders once it gets you know too small to hold in your hand. You do have to be a little more careful doing this with the H pencils just because the H pencils have uh, a little less graphite in them. They're not quite as thick. So if you watched the intro to graphite class where I talked about the difference between the H and the B pencils, the B pencils just have more graphite in them. So they're, they're softer, but it's also just got more, it's just a thicker graphite inside of the casing. So this one has a little more wood. And so the pencil's a little thin. And so I just wanted everybody to see the difference between the H and the B pencils as I'm sharpening them this way. You have to be really careful when we get to the end there not to cut the, the graphite itself. And my desk is very messy now, but worth it. I think it's, it's so worth it. Okay, and I've already sharpened my charcoal pencils that way. Uh, same thing, uh, the charcoal is going to be thicker, but you just um, don't want to sharpen the actual charcoal itself. Just whittle it down till the charcoal is exposed and then use the, the sandpaper to actually sharpen the pencil itself. So you'll do that with 
with all of your pencils and that will make it easiest to get a variety of lines, which I will demonstrate in just a moment. I'm just gonna clear my oh, agent. Yes. While you do this, we have a couple of questions. Um, the first one is from Maria. She'd like to know if you run out of graphite, could uh, could you use a regular sharpener for them, um, like if it was an 8B pencil? Um, yeah, when it gets down to the point where it's this small and you can't do it with the knife anymore, then yeah, you could. I mean, I guess once the pencil starts getting to, what I like to do is when it gets to about this, this size, I go ahead and just whittle it down so that there's like a lot of the, the graphite exposed. So it's like almost half and half. And then that way, you know, when it gets to be too small, I've still got a lot shown and I can just still keep using the, the sandpaper. But definitely, you know, you can switch to the handheld one if it gets too small to, you know, to use the knife because that will become an issue. It also might just be time for a new pencil if it's too small to, to sharpen anymore. Perfect. And any suggestions if the um, graphite keeps breaking? Uh, that's using the blade. <laughs> the blade is going to definitely keep that from happening because you're not, you're not actually cutting into the graphite. You're just taking the wood off and just exposing it. So um, if it keeps breaking with um, you know, a handheld sharpener, then the blade is definitely the way to go. And Artist Loft makes this utility knife. Um, I found it at Michael's in the aisle with, with the pencils. Okay, so um, let's just start with an H pencil. So in this kit, we've got just uh, the 2H, the H, and then the HB, uh, which is a mix of the H and the B. And you can go back and watch the intro to graphite and drawing forms class for a full explanation of the, we've actually repeated that class. Uh, so I'm not gonna go too much into that again, since I've already talked about that so much and all those, so both of those classes are on YouTube to check out. Um, Adrian. Um very quick before you get started. Sorry uh, for the interruption. Um, my bad. I misread the question. Um, it was actually a question about um, the charcoal keeps breaking um, when someone is trying to sharpen it. Any suggestions for that? The charcoal, not the graphite. Uh, well, same thing. Just uh, using the blade will keep that from happening. Um, because yeah, if it keeps happening in the handheld with the handheld sharpener, then um, I assure you, it's less likely to happen if you sharpen with the blade. Okay. Same answer. Okay, so I've got just the, the H pencil here. All right, and so this is what I like to do, like I said, in all of my private lessons and um, in my painting classes, I have everyone um, do the same thing. So if it's happening with the blade, I just saw that pop up, like it's it's still breaking even with the blade, um, shallow cuts. So I never cut the actual charcoal itself. So you're probably going too deep and you're cutting into the, the charcoal. But if you keep your, your, you know, every indention that you make into the pencil, like very shallow, like think about a cheese grater, you know, what a cheese grater does. It's just barely skimming the surface of the, the cheese and then you get a nice thin slice of cheese, right? Um, so as long as you're making a shallow cut each time, you're only gonna get like a little, you know, a little sliver of the, the wood is gonna come off at a time. And then, so there shouldn't be any reason for you to cut into the actual charcoal or graphite itself. So if it still keeps breaking when you're uh, shaving it off that way, just really practice going, you know, doing long shallow cuts, like start at the back and just keep making shallow cuts. And that's a great example of why, you know, when I taught high school, I used to always make the students do it in front of me and let me see their technique and how they were doing it, you know, because just watching somebody do it or just trying it, you know, yourself once, you're not always going to get the results that you want. So um, 
you know, just keep practicing the, the long shallow cuts and that should uh, it should fix the issue of it breaking because I'm willing to bet you're you're making an indention that's going so deep that it's cutting the charcoal and it's starting to to break it. So if that's happening to a lot of people, take your time, take a deep breath, long shallow cuts. Okay, so uh, I am going to refer to that intro to graphite. Uh, class a couple more times just because I talked about holding the pencil towards the back of the pencil in that class and all the benefits of holding the pencil towards the back and uh, using your entire uh, arm muscle to, to move the, the pencil as opposed to drawing like this, holding it towards the front or um, you, especially this where we hold it like this towards the paper. You don't want to do that with an H pencil why someone who's been here for all of the classes so far someone tell me why do you not want to hold an h pencil like this when you're drawing so someone says digs into the paper and exactly. that's what we have so far perfect yes thank you so it will dig into the paper because it's got more um binders on the pencil less graphite it's not as soft and it's it's got a very hard it's the h stands for hard it's a hard um graphite so it's going to dig into the pencil when you do that so when you hold it towards the back of the pencil you're by default not going to be putting too much pressure on the pencil and so what i want us to do now is hold it towards the back and i want to see how dark of a tone we can make drawing on the side, creating a nice soft tone. So tonal shading is where we have a smooth, continuous blend of, uh, of what we're drawing with. And we get this, you know, tone and music is a continuous thing, right? So we're gonna start with a harder pressure and we're using the H pencil. So if we we're holding it this way, we're not gonna be able to do this. We can only do it on the side and having it sharpened this way is also uh, kind of necessary because we're not gonna be able to get so much of a, um, you know, that much of the graphite to even come out of the pencil if we've only got it sharpened like this, right? It's just gonna be harder to get well, you can do it, but we're going to get more of the pencil to come out at a time when we do that. So we're going to use harder pressure, so a firm pressure, not hard. We don't want to dig into the paper. And then as we drag it down, we're going to let up on the pressure. So when I did this tonal shading um, value scale, I used a variety of pencils. I used my B pencils for the uh, the darker values, the absolute 10 on the value scale, and then I used my uh, lighter B pencils for the the lighter darks or the medium darks, and then for the medium dark I used an HB, and then for my lightest lights I used H pencils. Well, I've only got an H pencil here, but I want to see what kind of a variation in tone I can make just by picking up my pressure on the pencil. So that's what I want you to do first is just kind of color on the side of, of the pencil and see what happens when you put a lot of pressure and then you lift up on the pressure. And then I want to make a few different lines with I mean, I want you to do this with every pencil that comes in the set. And like I said, we're not going to sit here and do this with all of the, the things in the set. But I, I want to just talk about, you know, what I'm doing with just a, a few of them. And then I'd like you to do this with all of them. Okay, so after that, I want you to hold your pencil in a little bit different way. So I'm going to still hold it towards the back of the pencil, but I'm... Um, holding it more like a writing utensil like this. And so I'm focusing the point as I draw, but I'm kind of, I'm using my arm still. So the movement is coming from my arm and I've locked my wrist and I'm gonna see if I can make a nice straight continuous line. 
and I'm going to let up on my pressure as I do that. So I'm going to start with a darker line and then I'm going to let up on my pressure. And so by kind of locking my wrist, I can make a pretty straight line. And I love to do this as a drill with a paintbrush as well, because it really helps to control that straight line. A lot of people struggle to make a straight line with a paintbrush. And I think the same technique that I use with my drawing hand when I'm drawing with a pencil is the same sort of thing that I do when I'm drawing with a paintbrush. And there will be a class on drawing with brush pens and, and paint brushes coming up later in this series, by the way. Okay, and then we're gonna do a series of dotted lines or little dashes, but still just trying to maintain like a quick straight movement as you go. Um, and then I want you to do a scribble sketch so using more pressure as you scribble and then let up your pressure and let it be kind of loose as you go. And when you do that one, I want you to think about the full breadth of the, of the graphite that's exposed here. So I'm sort of switching the pressure as I'm doing this. Like think about like a figure eight doing the pressure kind of on the side and then lifting the pressure up and making those lines thinner. So play around with some different ways that you're holding your pencil in your hand. Try not to always hold your pencil in the exact same way. And that's what I'm talking about as far as, I feel like that really translates to what I'm doing with the guitar lately to try to, to finally make some progress with my, my muscle memory is I'm doing a chromatic exercise down all the frets and trying to you know, hit every, um, every string and, and strum down the strings to a metronome. And as I'm doing that, you know, I'm slowly getting faster and more, uh, my hands are starting to stretch more and more. But these are the sorts of things that as I'm drawing, I notice that I'm switching how I'm holding my hands. And that's a question I get from beginners all the time is, why do you hold your hand differently when you're doing details? And why do you hold your hand differently when you're doing big sweeping, you know, loose things? And it's because sometimes I need to focus my lines and I need a focused pressure. And other times what I need is to find a shape and I'm gonna do that more by holding it towards the back and being loose. And sometimes I just want things to be loose. And if I want them to be tight, then I'm gonna do the thing where I lock my wrist, but the movement is primarily coming from my arm. And that is something that I never noticed, you know, professional artists doing when I was at the beginner phase. It's just something that I learned through years of practice and getting better and realizing that I was doing it. Um, and then I started to notice other people doing it. And one of the things I pride myself on as an art teacher is sharing these little, you know, tips and tricks of the trade that people don't often um, tell you when you're in the beginner phase and that you kind of just have to learn through trial and error. So I'm telling you right now, if you spend 20 minutes a day doing nothing else but these little muscle memory drills with materials in your kit, you're going to start to be able to stretch the muscle and you'll notice a difference in the way that you're drawing. Okay, so the next thing I want us to talk about is blending these tones. So I'm just going to sketch a little bit of kind of a medium tone like I have there um, in the, the little value scale thing that I did where I let up on the pressure. So I'll do a medium blend like that and then um, take one of the tortillions and just blend one of those with your tortillion and see what happens when you blend it like that. And then take a paintbrush and see what happens when you blend it with a paintbrush. So when I blended it with the paintbrush, I got a lighter tone. When I blended it with the tortillion, I got a darker tone. Now I want you to draw just like one or two lines. 
and blend that a little bit with the paintbrush. See what happens when you blend that with a paintbrush and see what happens when you blend one of those with the tortillion. So this is probably one of the biggest don'ts that I've touched on in all of the, the classes so far. And that is when you're blending with the tortillions, don't lean on the tortillions to do all the work for you because look at the blend that I got when I actually you know, shaded with my pencil a little bit first, and then I'm blending the shades of the pencil versus what happens when I just drew a line and I went to blend that like, yeah, I am going to get a tone to happen, but it's kind of, it takes a lot of work to get that to be smooth and continuous. And mostly it feels like I just am smearing it around a little bit. So you can lose a lot of definition and you can lose a lot of quality of tone and line in your your drawing when you lean on the tortillion to do all of the blending for you okay so i'm going to switch to uh that 6b and do the same thing that i did with with the h and like i said we're not gonna have time to do this with every material but i'm going to try to do it with all of them before we run out of time but i just did this with every material in this kit. And even if you don't have this kit, you know, or the set, you can still, you know, do this with all of your materials all the time. I recommend doing this with any new material that you get, you know, take it out of its packaging and just play with it, like, and just develop a relationship with it, see what it is capable of doing, how it looks when you blend it in a variety of ways. Oh, and also how it looks when you erase it a variety of ways. Um, you can take your synthetic eraser and erase into one of uh, the marks that you've made. And then you can take your kneaded eraser and erase into it. You know, that way you're kind of test driving the materials and you know what they do. So when you get to a point in your drawing, when you're trying to decide what the next course of action is, you can do that. Or you can just have a piece of scratch paper out and you can do this at any point in your drawing just to see what pencil would make the most sense for you to use next. That's a question I've gotten a lot of, uh, by the way, throughout these classes, um, you know, which pencil am I switching to? And um, that depends on what your needs are, right? If you need it to be darker, then you're gonna want a heavier B pencil. If you need it to be lighter, you're gonna want an H pencil, but you might be able to achieve the same value with a number of pencils through just the amount of pressure that you're putting on it. Like when I compare the 6B to the 4B to the 2B to the HB, I feel like you know, it, it's a variation in the tone that I'm getting. Um, you know, it's just a little bit different quality of mark that's appearing on the, the page. But as I'm making that tone, but I can make them all get about the same level of darkness, right? It's just a matter of the pressure that I'm putting on them. So it depends on what your needs are as you're drawing which pencil you're going to choose and you can do a lot of things with just one pencil and so this is what we're we're practicing here is how many different kinds of marks can i make with this same pencil and if you'll notice i'm kind of using some of these alternative uh, shading techniques as i'm doing this like this would be my hatching right and then cross hatching would be the same thing, but going multiple directions with my line. So I'm just changing the amount of pressure that I'm putting on the 6B right now to create a little value scale of cross hatching. And I just lightened up on my pressure as I did that. And then same thing with the hatching or some some dotted lines and then scribbling and change the the way you're holding the pencil as you do that hold it on its side hold it towards the front or the middle and change 
you know, the direction that you're pointing it, see what's the most comfortable for you. And then we could do a little bit of stippling dots here as well. Um, whenever I was talking about stippling in the class on alternative sheeting techniques, I remember there was a question about um, how big do you make the dots when you're doing stippling? And so testing out all of the different H and B pencils and seeing, you know, how concentrated are my dots with the H? How, you know, how many dots would I have to use it with the H pencil to get it to be a certain value, as opposed to making those same stippling dots with the 6B, right? I can make fatter dots with the 6B because it's a softer, uh, wider pencil and I can make finer dots with with the H pencil or, or the 2H, etc. Okay, I want to make sure that I, I've done the pen um, before the end of the class. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the pen here. So this is the O3 that comes in the 101 set. There will be another class where I talk about uh, using the, the various pens in a artist loft set of, of pens with the different sized nibs. Um, but the, the O3 is what comes in the artist loft 101 set. So that's the one I'm talking about now. So with this one, it's all about the pressure. We can't do tonal shading with, um, with a pen. So when it comes to pen and ink, we have to uh, use the alternative shading techniques. And there have been uh, a couple of classes on those, one or two classes where I broke down hatching, cross hatching, and then another class where I broke down stippling and scribbling with a, a still life item. So hatching are one directional lines that follow the contours of a form. Cross hatching are multiple directional lines that follow the contours of a form. Stippling are dots that overlap until we get to a solid black, we become more spaced out, lighter to get our, our lighter values. Everything always following the contours of a form as we add value and then scribbling or random mark. Uh, so when it comes to a pen, we have to use hatching, cross hatching, stippling and scribbling because we don't have the option of the, the tonal shading. We can't get that smooth continuous thing to happen, but we can change the pressure on the pen and get a lot of different things to happen. So this is where locking my wrist like this and sort of pointing it and I like to stick my pinky out too. it kind of steadies me. I can make a pretty straight line like that, just letting up on the pressure as I make that line. Okay, and I'm just going to make a little scale of hatching and cross hatching using more and then less pressure on the pen. So when it comes to that value scale with a pen, it's all about the, I need a spare piece of paper. I'm starting to smear all my, my lines on the page. I'm noticing I've got some graphite on, on my hand. Here we go. So it's all about the, the pressure that I'm putting on it. And so I'm gonna get these little, you know, half, half lines, more like implied lines. And there was a whole class on implied line, which you could go check out as well. So getting less pressure on your, your pen is gonna allow you to make those very kind of sketchy implied lines with the pen. So you just kind of start out with more pressure and then let up on the pressure. I think it's easier to start out dark and then let up on the pressure as opposed to trying to start out light and then increase your pressure. It depends on how you work though. You might find that it's easier to increase your pressure or it might be easier to start out heavy and then let up on the pressure. 
sometimes I even like to keep pens that are losing their ink on purpose so that when I get to a drawing where I want a lot of really light values on the value scale and um, that's when I'll pull out that pen that's losing its ink and it's a lot easier to get those kind of implied sketchy lines to happen if my pen is running out of ink. But another trick that I like to use for um, achieving interesting value with a pen is this. So I sort of hover over the page. So I swirling my pencil around like this to make some scribbling lines but I'm hovering over the page as I do it so that my pen is just kind of touching the page inconsistently. And so I can get some really interesting marks to happen when I do that. And you can try that with any of your, your materials. That's another good exercise or drill to do. And this is not some, I cannot say this enough. This is something I do all the time. If you look through my sketchbooks, or you know any materials that I've been using while I've been teaching, I always do this all the time just to you know stretch my muscle and to test out a new you know if I get a new paintbrush, the first thing I do is see how thick of a line I can make with that paintbrush, how thin of a line, how is it going to paint a big swathy area, you know. So same thing with my pencils and my pens. What kind of a mark can I make with that? And when you go into Michael's or any art supply store, they often have a strip of paper there so that you can test out, you know, different things before you buy them. And you'll see, you know, people doodling or writing messages or whatever. And you can be the one to do, you know, your little drills on it and see what kinds of interesting marks you can make with that pen. Okay, what else? Oh, let's do some stippling dots with the pen, see how thick those are. If I put a very firm pressure, you don't wanna press down too hard because you'll mess up the nib of your pen if you press down too hard, but then you can definitely make some kind of smaller dots if you let up with the pressure. Not by much, but you can. Those are definitely a little darker than those. All right, what else? Oh, did I do my little dotted lines? Okay, any questions about the pen or the pencils before I move on to the charcoal? Um, just one question. Um, so let me find it real fast. Um, I cannot find it right now. Oh, here. Um, so uh, just a question about if in the future you have planned um, on doing a class um, using the graphite residue powder or shaving. Um, oh, that's a really good question. Uh, I have not planned anything like that, but I definitely can. Um, I do want to do a class that's just focused on the, the charcoal um, sticks and blending with paintbrushes. So, and I'll definitely bring some charcoal powder into to that, that class. Um, yeah, this is an ongoing series that I, I'm planning out about two months at a time. So right now I've got the classes planned through the end of November and I'm really excited about those classes that are coming up. Um, so next, I could just tell you what's in the near future. And yeah, I, I love if there's anything like that, that people are, wanting, um, I can try to plan for that down the line for sure, because using the, the graphite powder or the, the charcoal powder is opens up a lot of different um, fun techniques that you can use for achieving something that I do a lot in my personal work, which is, you know, highly blended ethereal stuff. And so I definitely, when I work with graphite and charcoal, I try to always maintain the ethereal quality of my work, my painted work, and I've got a lot of techniques for that. So yeah. Perfect. Thank you. So I've got, I'm just going to do a couple of the, the charcoal pencils since we're running low on time. So this is the, the hard pencil, but you can see the soft, medium, and hard. You can achieve a lot of similar things. It's just going to be a different quality of line or a different 
uh, quality of to the tone and um, but you can get just as dark with the soft medium. Well, the hard actually doesn't get as black as the, the medium and the, the soft. I noticed it's, it's a little bit more of a dull, but see, that's why it's so good to do this. Like I maybe wouldn't have known that just from drawing the lines, the lines all look fairly similar. Well, the hard does look a little different, but when you really do that tone with them, you can see, so here's the hard, I'll just compare and contrast the, the hard and soft. Um, so I'm putting nice, even, but firm pressure and going over that area a lot to get it to a solid black. And then I'm just dragging it down and letting up on my pressure. But I can see there's a few indentions that are being made if I'm not careful, if I kind of press the tip down as I do that. Um, I'm getting some indentions because it is a harder charcoal pencil. So you want to be mindful of that. And if you don't want those indentions to happen, using it on its side and holding it towards the back of the pencil will keep that from happening and going slow and even with your pressure. And you could also do that, you know, one of these other techniques to get there as well. Like if using the smooth continuous blend doesn't quite get you the same, the, you know, the effect that you're going for, and also with charcoal, I like to play around and get, you know, with the, the different marks that I'm making. So try doing a scale where you scribble. So you are kind of using the tip of the, and then let up on your pressure and see what happens like that. And we definitely want to make a couple of little side tones here and blend with, so here we're blending with just the pencil, right? We've blended because we've subtly shifted the value of our tone as we made that scale, right? So it's a, it's a blended thing that occurs, right? So try extending your little tone that you shade over here on the side with the tortillion like blend it with the tortillion and then see what happens if you extend off of it with the tortillion. And then do that same thing with your paintbrush. Blend the actual swatch itself and then see if you can extend it. So with the hard pencil, you know, I've already done this, it doesn't, since it's harder, it's not as soft, it's not as easy to extend. So that tells you right there when you wanna use the hard pencil versus the soft and medium pencil in your drawing, because if you're looking for a nice, you know, if you're looking to extend and blend out and get something soft like that to happen, it's gonna be a lot harder to do with the hard charcoal. Uh, so let me do a few more things with it. I'm just going to do a few different lines. Yeah, your, your page doesn't have to look as uniform as mine. This could be just like a big messy scribble thing where everything's all over the place. Like don't feel like you have to make things as, as uniform as I made these examples. You know, just really get in there and play around with some different mark making. When I, I've taught younger kids, when it comes to line and tone, I always love the, the quote by the artist Paul Clay, Clee. He said, a line is a dot that went for a walk. So you take your dot for a walk across the page, um, but you can take that, that dot for a walk in a lot of different ways, right? It doesn't have to be a, a straight walk. It can be a curvy or a zigzag or, you know, just play around with all the different qualities of line that you can get. Okay, and then the soft. Do this one because I realize we are running out of time here. 
letting up on my pressure, I'm kind of evening it out. So I'm not having as much of a risk of those little indentions from the charcoal pencil with the soft pencil. So the hard pencil can definitely help you get, you know, lighter values with the charcoal or to make you know, some nice crisp lines and the soft pencil is going to be your go to for for all of your big, rich, dark moments. So we'll blend that a couple of different ways and also uh, erase this a couple of different ways. So well, let me blend it first. I'll blend it with my tortillion and look how far I can extend that. When I'm blending with the tortillion, I can really, the tortillions and the charcoal are good friends. The tortillions are very helpful when you're blending with your charcoal. Um, but you can also, you can always over blend. It can always happen with anything. And then the paintbrush. I just love that like soft cloudy effect that you can get with the paintbrush and the charcoal. Oh, Adrian, we have a question here. Um, should we be rotating our pencil graphite as we um, make these light and dark values? Um, as you're doing the, the tonal shift, I would try to keep, keep it the same, like keep a smooth, continuous um, hand movement going, you know, keep it the same. But when you're doing like your scribbles or your you know, even like a line, practice holding your hand a variety of ways. Like see if you can control your pencil more if you hold it like this and sort of lock your wrist like I like to do, or maybe you wanna come at it from the top like this and lock your wrist and maybe it's easier for you to get a straight line like that. Or maybe it's easier if you come over here from the corner of the page. I mean, it feels silly to approach it different ways like that, but it makes such a difference. And like I said, over the years, I've noticed how drastically different I hold my pencil when I'm working on details as opposed to blocking in. So, I mean, it's, it's a big factor in how I work. And so it's worth sharing with beginners and, you know, get you practicing you know, those things now so that you don't have to put in the, the years of trial and error to realize, you know, and honestly, I never realized how I could make straight lines so easily until, um, especially with a paintbrush, until a friend of mine showed me that she does the thing with her pinky. She sticks her pinky out and with a paintbrush, this is very helpful, but with a pencil, it's helpful too. It just, it helps me steady my hand so that I can, you know, control, especially with a paintbrush, but I, I do it when I'm drawing now too. I catch myself always sticking that pinky out to steady myself. Oh, it is after seven o'clock, you guys. I went right up to the end of the hour. Um, and then the charcoal sticks I didn't get to, but I did the, the same thing with the charcoal sticks. So that's the soft and I blended with the, the uh, the paintbrush and the tortillion and I even made some stippling dots with just the residue that was left on the tortillion and I did that with with all of my uh, charcoal sticks so just do your drills do your practice and this will come up again next week's in next week's class is all about starting and keeping a uh, regular sketchbook practice. And so all you're gonna need for that is a small pocket size sketchbook and then just any drawing materials. Um, I recommended the Artist Loft 101 set for that class next week as well. And I'm gonna talk about ways that you can um, start and keep a regular sketchbook practice and doing these drills are gonna be at the top of that list of things that you can do when you're like, I want to draw, but what? Um, you can just do your drills. So, okay, I hope that was helpful. Uh, I enjoyed it. And um, yeah, thank you guys again for a great class. Thank you so much, Adrian. Thanks everyone for joining us today. We'll see you next class. Good night. Good night.